I always want to fight at Madison Square Garden. You know, the UFC always goes to MSG in November, so I always got that starred. And it's pretty crazy. This is my third time now fighting at MSG. It feels like my my home ground. You know, I got this this French guy coming into my my home home territory, and I got to uh, protect my homeland. So I'm pumped. At the end of the day, it's life, bro. And you know, I'm gonna get shit happen. You know, shit gonna happen to us. Bro, like, I lost a lot of shit to the point, nigga, I became dumb as fuck. Like, man, fuck this shit. Like, I don't know what else I'm gonna do, you feel me? Like, fuck it, I'm gonna go rob somebody. You know, this might be the end, yada, yada, yada. I ain't never got enough of it, but I always got everything I need and could ever want. I just be chilling in the crib, playing video games, waiting for my chance to punch somebody in their face, bro. Overdogs Podcast, Episode 11, The Fighting, Betting, Drinking, Dumb Shit Show. I'm your host, Bags. We got my boy, uh, Mike Perry. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing great, sir. Thank you very much. Ready? Excellent. Mac, how you doing? Fantastic. I'm doing fantastic. Awesome. Sponsored by WearKC.com, CanPie Collective. Go over there and get you some drip. All right, boys, let's talk about, uh, we, we got some guests on tonight, but I want to talk about like 294 first. I know we all got up early. We were kind of texting back and forth. Uh, Mike, give me your, give me your thoughts on, on just the fights in general, whether it's the fucking doctors involved, the main fights. I want to hear your thoughts. Um, well, I missed some of the earlier stuff. I got the later fights. Uh, I went to training and sparred myself that day. Um, but the ones that I bet on were all later in the night anyway, so I, I they voided my bet with uh with the two oh five or Johnny Walker. Yeah, they and, no contest on that. Yeah, no, yep, a no contest. So they voided my bet, gave me my money back. Yep. And then Yo, uh, but but Mike, don't you don't you think you should have won the bet? Like to me that was a fucking DQ. If anything's a DQ, that's a DQ. Which no, you would have won your bet. bet. Was my bet, I had an interesting bet. It was either fighter to win in the second and third round. And I it got to like a minute and 40 left. And I was sitting there like, man, I don't know if they're going to make it to the next round. Either fighter to win in the second or third. That was my bet. So gotcha. uh, I got it back. And I did lose two other bets. I bet on the underdogs, on the other guys. just And damn, I... I didn't see Islam coming sharp like that and uh, throwing that head kick all willy nilly. So he caught Volk. That's, that's all she wrote. Mac, any 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 feedback? I know you probably got plenty on that card. Uh, yeah, my take is uh, I want eighty bucks back. <laughs> no, that was like a fifty dollar card, bro. Uh, that's one of the few I bought where I was just like, well, damn. I don't know. It felt so inconclusive. I'm with you on that, Mike. Like, I had a parlay run in with, uh, I think I had Ankle I have, but um, that wasn't a DQ because of why. Because and the rules get, and it's up to the ref's discretion, but I believe it's because the fight didn't go long enough and because it wasn't like an intentional foul. So that's why. A DQ would come, and, and dude, if, if I'm. The, if you know the intricacies of the rules, like you, go ahead and fix me in the comments. But I believe yeah. that's the thing. It didn't go long enough for the ref. So the ref, it's at his discretion to be like, was that an intentional fucking knee? Mm. And because it wasn't, then he didn't intend to do it. So it's not a DQ. It's just a no contest because it has to go like a round and a half. And then they go to or two rounds. They go to the judge's scorecards if something like that happens. A DQ would come if he's like warned you about it. You do it again. Uh, I think that's what happened, but yeah, it is bullshit. It voids out on your parlays. That's only one fight, man. I got a lot of thoughts, but the yeah. other fights, um, I talked a bit. I'll uh, let you guys make some points and all. Oh, wait, you know what? The number one thing I wanted to bring up, it's been a bit of a thing on this podcast, uh, Mike and Bags. I held oh, strong. Oh, ah, yeah. I knew this. Was, I, already had, it, I already had it written down. Oh, I had it written God. down. Dude, I didn't know that was that was so fucking random. But yeah, Bud Light's back, boys. All right, let's continue on. $100 million deal for the uh, UFC with Bud Light? Oof. It's weird how fast they're switching from the Modelo thing. Because like the Modelo thing, like you never used to be like Bud Light. 
like the fighting spirit of the UFC. Like Modelo went hand in hand with the hand in hand with their marketing of that shit all the time. Like no one ever talked about. It. It's funny they just switched that up. It was brewed with a fighting spirit up until it wasn't. So I actually had a call probably eight weeks ago, ten weeks ago, with mm-hmm. with a guy that that was now spearheading the Bud Light campaign. And we were talking about this, right? And I actually brought up, I was like, yo, you know, he was like, he asked me, he said, what about John Jones? And I said, I don't know if John will do an alcohol advertisement, right? I mean, unless it's a fucking, you better make it a massive fucking deal that he can't like say no to, right? And uh, we talked about that for a bit. Conversation just kind of died off. And then obviously they came back with uh, with the $100 million deal. But yeah, I mean, that's a big stab, right? And trying to trying to bring your, your brand back because obviously they're in the fucking gutters. It's funny, dude. Part of why I started drinking, because I'm usually like a Coors guy. I started doing Bud Light because everything else was sold out. Like Bud Light was just always stocked right there. So I just started grabbing that after all the after all the bullshit happened. I'm sure it was. Yeah, so I, heard how, they were marketing I, mean, I don't shit think down. they're a bad company if they they obviously got to be on top because they're everywhere. But I don't know who's drinking it except Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: I don't think I don't think it wins any fans over, right? Like like they've already pissed everybody off. I don't think anybody's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna drink a Bud Light because they're a fucking sponsor of the UFC. I don't see it personally. But look, Bud Light owns they own everything. Anheuser Busch owns everything they own all the top beers they own all kinds of alcohol like just because you're not drinking one of their brands you're drinking another one of their brands i assure you yeah you could sit there ripping on you know like a fucking what miller and be like yeah oh dude fuck bud light you're dude you're drinking the same shit brother yeah i want to talk about uh the craziest thing to me that happened on the card Mm -hmm. was the doctor coming out and saying you did not get hit in the groin and i'm like how are you telling, you're a doctor, how the hell are you telling this man who's been on the ground for three minutes, like, in obvious pain, that he didn't get hit in the groin, right? Like, as a, as a doctor, why, why the fuck is that even in, within his realm of responsibility or things that he should say? Mike, what, do, what did you think about that? I, uh, I mean, it happens, like the ref later, Johnny Walker said the desert. He said he's in the desert. I feel like, you know, you should have let him fight, but doctors are there to protect the people. And if they stop a fight for any reason, you know, you get, you got to respect it. So I agree with that 100%, right? Like the doctor is there for to, for protection, right? Because look, you get hit in the head too hard, you're ready to go no matter what, right? So you got you to have somebody there to be like, all right, we, we've got to stop this fight at this point for somebody's safety. But to come in there while the guy's on the ground and just roll up and be like, yo, you didn't get hit in the groin. He's like, yo, it was all, the guy responded like it was all dick and balls. Like, what are you talking about? And the replays clearly showed it was a straight shot to the, you know, to the nuts. Like, Mm. And he had to be carried off in a stretcher, and they said he was vomiting in the back. For, but I just thought it was very weird for the doctor to give his input on wh- where he got hit. I don't recall ever really seeing that. And I think so there's two things about that. I think what made that one even weirder is in the way he handled the Walker situation. So hand in hand, you have two fuck-ups. But then yeah. the one you never really see, it's not the doctor's job to go in there. It's to go in there and make sure the fighter can continue safely. It's not to, like, question them. The way they usually do that would be like, well, where does it hurt? They'll sit there and be like, well, you got time. But they don't just, like, ever say that's cap right to their fucking face. And then stand over him for the rest of the two minutes like, like, he, like he was a disappointed dad at a fucking Little League game, right? Like, he just hovered over him and stared at him like he was pissed off. Wow. Well, I, was, I did think I did think at one point I was like, imagine they did this to Mike Perry. Imagine Mike Perry get kicked in the dick and the doctor walks over and says, that wasn't your dick and balls. Like, you're being a bitch. No, nah, bro. You- <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't react like that. I could block my nuts, dude. I don't give a fuck. What's the worst? You wear uh, the diamond cups, the steel cups, or do you no, wear the plastic I, ones? You just got to be ready. I just wear, like, a red... For, for my last one with the boxing, I was going to wear a boxing... Uh, cup, but I feel like I prefer the. I don't need the pad, like, like they give you that little pad belt you gotta wear. Um, mm-hmm. 
I don't like that. So I just wear the like jock strap with the with the cup. So I actually didn't know that high school football cup. He's ready to go. Yeah, Yeah, I I actually I wasn't aware that you could opt out of like the kidney guard type thing. Like you don't have to wear that. Not in bare knuckle, no. Nah, you know. Oh, okay. I mean, a cup is a cup. You don't gotta wear this big old bodyguard shield thing. Yeah, those things look stupid. Yeah, cool. respect. All right, so. so Wait, how what's the this? worst time you ever got kicked in the dick? Platinum. Sorry, I gotta ask because I saw Bag say something about it. Like, bro, there's been some brutal ones. He kicked me in the nuts, and I tried to kick him back in the nuts, and Daniel Cormier <laughs> caught it. And I did. My I, my toe hit his cup. He kicked me in the nuts, and I kicked him back in the nuts. And then he kicked me in my face. <laughs> and and then uh, he, kicked, it, he punched me and kicked me a couple more times too in the face. And then you know, so I was I was protecting on the ground like this. Ugh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Run it back, man. Bare knuckle box. Anybody, dog. Let's go. <laughs> you, you don't got, have to get. You, you don't have to worry about getting kicked in the nuts in bare knuckle, brother. But dude, there was this one where the uh, the Kung Fu Panda. He's like a heavy set, I think, uh, road FC fighter, and he gets kicked in the dick like right off the bat, and he goes down. And I've never seen a dude. I mean, he's squirming like he's. It's the only, it's the most true reaction I've ever seen to it. They literally bring out like a tent and they're like checking this dude's nuts, like in the cage, and he's just thriving in pain. Like, oh, oh, oh! He ruptured a nut. Have you guys ever seen that one? I've not. Dude, play it. They, play it. They real should quick. have done the same shit in Abu Dhabi. I thought, I thought he had broken his pelvis or ruptured a nut. One of the two. The guy was face down for five fucking minutes holding his holding his junk. I mean, yo. So this is the nastiest fucking dick kick I've ever seen. This guy was about to puke his nut out, right here. You get why they call him Panda? We should sign this motherfucker. I can see it. What league is this? Road, Road FC. I mean, is it like right out the gate? Yes, it's right out the gate. All that. Oh, there you go. All right, we tap hands. Oh, dude, dude, look at look at him. Like we're in a fight, man. His cups obviously moved around. I found somebody in the street. That's it. First thing I'm doing. Oh. Ah. You would. <laughs> right. Bro, his face. There is. That is. You can't act that well. Nah. Right. Same in Abu Dhabi. Who was the guy that got hit, uh, Mac? Ooh. Oh, dude. Because the fight before that, or a couple of fights before that on the prelims, he another guy had kicked uh, the guy like three times in the nuts, and the ref kept warning him. He'd hit him like three times, and it changed the whole fucking trajectory of that fight because mm-hmm. the guy was winning the fight, dominant, and got kicked like three or four times, and had to take like a three minute break and a two minute break, and then came back and lost the fight. It was a weird card. Two ninety four was a weird card, man. Dude, How do you it, come back and lose the fight. You can't come back and then lose. If you come back, then you win. I get it. I get it. But it definitely, you could tell where it swayed the momentum of the fight, Mike. Like, he was very aggressive, you know what I mean? And then and then got kicked. Like, dude, it was like three or four, like, directly on the cup. And he kept, you know, at that point, he was just too timid to go in. I don't know if he, you know, expected another one or what. But, I mean, you know how that goes, Mike. Like, you've been in a fight probably, like, in, in all sports, right? Like, momentum is a motherfucker. Like, once that kind of... You, 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 like, even if you're getting beat and you catch, you know, you catch a good punch or you find your range or whatever, like that momentum is a, is a motherfucker when it comes to like shifting a fight that you're losing or you're winning either way. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, either way, like a fight, you know, I mean, I don't care I, if, they, if they get this big 
I don't see the momentum in my fights. I guess I don't know if I see it like that. But if if I you know get some momentum or if they get some, I'm like, come on, bring it on, motherfucker, bring it on towards me. Like, let's go, because yeah. that just makes it easier. But if they if I'm having trouble catching them, it's it's uh you know I just gotta time it, cut them off. I don't care about no momentum because I get hit with big shots and then I'm like. Yeah, come and hit me again. <laughs> Mike, have you ever been in a fight where, like, you were you knew you were losing the fight, whether whatever reason it was, like the guy had range on you and he just kept catching, you couldn't you couldn't land anything, and then all of a sudden there was something in that fight that happened that switched and you came back and, and beat the shit out of him? I mean, I mean him and me and Max Griffin was a good fight. Yo, Matt Trubola's in the house. What's up, man? What's up, dog? What's good? Got the beard Dude, going. The beard is, it's looking powerful. The what up? What up? Super Saiyan half hair top. <laughs> How we doing? We're doing good. What's good, up, man? man? Yourself? Doing good, man. Doing good. Just, you know, the grind of fight camp. I got you. You're now what? Like uh, two weeks out? A little over? Yeah, a little bit over two weeks. So uh, just uh, finishing camp strong. Awesome. Love to hear it. I'm Bags. Uh, I'm sure you know Mike Perry, our boy Mac hey, what Malley. Up, Mike? What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Doing good, bro. How about you? Good. You got a lot of weight to cut in two weeks? Uh, You know, we're we're right on schedule. I'm about like... 19, 18, 19 pounds. That's good, yeah. Been sparring Dude, hard. you look like you've been just... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'll what, say it. What'd you say? Matt, I what's up, dude? I don't know if you know me from Twitter and shit. Bro, you look like oh, you've yeah, been, like, up? bagging, like, mammoths for a training camp, bro. You're looking fucking... <laughs> Like you look, yeah, you know, you we, we do whatever we gotta work, do dog. to uh, prepare. <laughs> Get some caveman shit going on over there. Usually a little bit more clean yeah. cut, but I like the look. What's up, dude? Yeah, man, I'm growing it out a little bit. You know, I always want to grow the hair out a little bit. See, see what I could do with it. So, you know, we'll see. You gonna grow it out and like uh, start braiding it like Spike Carlisle? Is that gonna be like a ginger yeah. thing now? <laughs> Let's do it, bro. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, 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 dude. Honestly, I, I always wanted to braid my hair. Like it was always like on my bucket list to like grow my hair out long enough so I could get it braided for a fight. So oh. I think I'm pretty close. And uh, on Saturday, I'm gonna try to get it braided and uh, see how I like it. Let's there go. You go. I remember the first time all, I got my hair. That was also on my bucket that. list as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that shit is long enough to be braided. I don't know. We're going to find out. I'm going to go see uh, the woman on Saturday, and she says she said it looks pretty good. So I'm thinking get the, get the braids on top and then shave up the sides and just get that Viking look, you know, for battle. Dude, chicks yeah, can braid yeah. any hair, like any hair, bro. When I, when I was growing my hair out, sure. oh, bro, let me uh, – or, hey, Mac, let me fucking braid your hair. I'm like, you can't fucking braid this yet. It's not long. Oh, they, they sure as hell will. They'll get it done. Yo, so we're going to see a Viking look. But you can't get hit, though. You can't get hit in the fight because if you get some braids that you ain't used to having and then you get hit, like, with anything right here, it's going to split because the braids is pulling your head tight. Hey, you know, I'll, I'll try not to get Don't hit. Don't let them hit you. <laughs> Don't let them hit you, bro. <laughs> that may be some veteran advice you might want to heed there uh matt you know just yeah just yeah thinking. we'll see i mean I, i'm i'm gonna try to get them braided on saturday and then and then have all next week to to yeah. have it and see how it feels see how i like it you know get my last sparring session with it too and uh and uh yeah just uh see see how it goes but whatever Sure. You remember that video hey. of Henry Cejudo when he's like sitting there with the lights flashing and he's like, it's like his eyes are open. He's like, fuck, yeah. dude, the first time I got my shit braided like that, that's what it felt like. Your skin's just being pulled back. It is not comfortable, bro. First time. Or maybe I got a bitch scalp. I don't fucking know. But dude, I felt like that just like 
Fuck. Mac, he gets pun- he, he gets punched in the face for a living. You you cried over your fucking hair, bro. True that. True that. Different. I'm pr- Different. Not fair. Fair enough. Fair Different. enough. Yeah. Fair hey enough. Matt, how excited are you, man, about going back home and fighting on the main fucking event at MSG? Like that's got to be a sick feeling. I know you're a big uh, New York Mets fan, New York guy. Like that's got to be a sick fucking spot for your fight. Oh yeah, man, it's huge. You know, I always want to fight at Madison Square Garden. You know. The UFC always goes to MSG in November, so I always got that starred. And it's pretty crazy. This is my third time now fighting at MSG. Dope. So it's it's kind of like it feels like my, my home ground, you know. I got this, this French guy coming into my my home home territory, and I got to uh, protect, uh, protect my homeland. So I'm pumped. How loud are the uh, steamroller chants going to be rolling through MSG, homie? Oh man, it's gonna be unreal just hearing the steamroller chants. I'm, I'm trying to hear some USA chants. I'm trying to, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be an unbelievable moment. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. So I, I got a quick question here as as a casual fan here. I want to know, like you, like obviously John and Stipe is off, right? Does 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 that disappoint you in any way? Because that that fight right there is an iconic fight that would have been talked about for 10, 20 years, right? So does that disappoint you that that comes off the main event? Even though Sergey and, and Tom is a great fucking fight, it's not that fight. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, I was I was pumped for that fight just like everybody else was. And then even like the poster, I was pumped to get that signed poster with them, you know, on it. And uh, it's it's a it's a definitely a big blow to the card. But uh, in the end of the day, it's really you know no change for me. I'm I'm still planning on stealing the show. Yeah, I hope well, you while we wait on that, we're talking about Go man, ahead, Mike. MSG on the main card. Uh, you know that's huge. He wants USA. He wants his name chanted. You know, Steve Roller. Gotta go that get it, huge, but, but like, I mean, I, yeah, I was, I was, I was wondering what, how he would respond to that, right? Like, because some guys would be like, "No, nah, I don't give a fuck," you know, who's fighting on that. But in reality, like, that's gonna be a card that's talked about for fucking twenty years, right? And so, in reality, is it is a big deal. Yo, what's there up, he man? is. What's up? Yo, I saw it, guys. Oh, yeah, good. Got you uh, now. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Yo, you so on yeah, top we, right we now? Call bro. Most of that, you were saying like you wanted to get the poster. Like, obviously, that's an iconic fight that's going to last for twenty years, right? You're a part of it, and and you know now it's off the table. I could, I could, I understand that completely. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. I, I think the only good thing about it is uh, the ticket prices will be lower. These ticket prices were were insane. It's like none of my buddies could even afford to go to the fights. So they're like. Like nine hundred dollars for nosebleeds. It's some bullshit. They dropped to five fifty today. I had no, multiple three, people hit three, me up. Three seventy five uh, an hour ago. I just looked at it. There you go. Because I was thinking tanking. about this too, right? Like this. This guy paid. Like this. I was gonna say this poor sucker paid. This motherfucker can afford tickets. We can't. But he paid like one hundred and twenty five k per ticket for two tickets to sit down below. It's the most expensive tickets ever. And like Matt said, like it was like a grand to get in the door, right? An hour ago, it was like three fifty. That's awesome. That, that's the way yeah. it should be. Of course. I agree 100%, man. Yeah, same shit happened. I'm a Nashville guy. Same shit happened when the, when the Predators got good and they were going to the finals and shit. All of a sudden, all these tickets were $1,000, and you had people that were lifelong Predators fans that couldn't get in the door because, you know, everybody was like, everybody with money was like, all right, I'll go fucking watch it for a period and bounce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nashville's a great time, man. I was out... I was out in Nashville uh, with Billy Q when he fought uh, the UFC out there, um, and I, I, I was I was impressed by how awesome Nashville was. It's a fun city, man. I'm headed. I'm taking my wife. I, I've been in Florida for like 15 years, but I'm taking my wife there tomorrow because we hadn't been and I hadn't been probably a year. I was like, let's go Nashville and listen to some music and have some drinks and some good food. It's a great town. Yeah, man. And and you know, you know, I, I spent a lot of time down in Florida. I was in tampa florida for about seven years i went to school down there you know mike i remember you back in the day coming up uh, i'm always rooting for all all the old school uh, florida guys you know i love training with julian williams and, and phil and everybody over over at fusion xl there's yeah. a lot of talent in florida 
Yeah, for sure, bro. East Coast. Yes. East, bro, we out here, Florida to New York, you know, and the MMA community, fighters, punchers, you know. Let's get it, bro. I remember training with you back in the day. Hell yeah, man. So maybe we need like an East Coast, West Coast, like like old rap. We need I do style, I was with right? Tupac with the fucking East Coast that. fighters, and West Coast fighters. Yeah, you know, we're we're built different over on the East Coast. I think we beat up some uh some West Coast fighters pretty easy. I like that. That's I fucked like up. That. I think I'm the only West Coast guy Let's here. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. That's automatic. It ain't got to be stated. They know what time it is, bro. They just got to tune in. Uh, mine's December 2nd. What's the date of your upcoming fight, man? Uh, November 11th. Ah, yeah. November 11th. Let's go. MSG, you know, that's big, man. That's top. Yeah, man. On, on Veterans Day, too. I'm, I'm, pumped, uh, I'm pumped for that. And you know I'm pumped. I got a I got an awesome opponent. You know I got a worthy opponent. This guy's good, um, so it's a it's a great test. Get and uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I get him. You know I love I love how people doubt me. I love how I'm always the underdog. I know I'm on the overdog podcast right now, but your boy's <laughs> always the underdog. Um, so and I love it. I thrive as an underdog. So I'm a, I'm gonna uh, definitely go out there and. And prove, you know, prove a lot of people wrong and uh, get another dub. What's that's the line on what this I, fight? That's kind of what I wanted to, like, it's a Damn, more long-form he question. he is the underdog. I'm shocked. Yeah, yeah, dude, people sleep on Fervola. Especially in the Drew Dober fight. I don't think people are going to do that as much anymore. But, dude, you've had, like, an interesting career. You're a bit of a, a bit of an outlier. You know, you, like, you came in here, you fought some fucking bangers, bro. Like, you beat Jalen Turner. You know, you you know. Then you had the Terrence McKinney fight. You fought Armand already. You beat Luis Pena. Then you went on this run after the Terrence McKinney fight. That's what I'm interested about. Sometimes people hit the UFC. You go in biting down on your mouthpiece, saying "fuck it, I'm a gingerless bang, bro." No soul, all chin. <laughs> fuck you. You throw down. You knock out Otman, who is like, bro. He, he has one of the nastiest knockouts I've ever seen in the UFC. Uh, I forget the guy's Timothy something. I mean, I was scared when he knocked that dude out. I felt bad. Then Drew Dober. The way Drew Dober was looking, and you delete that granite chin. Like, what? Just your thoughts on that, man. What chain? The UFC. It was, it was here. It was stop and go. A little bit of some speed bumps. But now you're smoking people that... What's up? Yeah, man. I mean, uh, 2021 was a tough year for me. You know, uh, I had, like, two short notice opponent changes... And then I ended up losing both those fights. I lost to Armin, and then I lost to Terrence, obviously. And that, that Terrence fight really fucked me up a little bit. Um, you know, after that, I really had to, uh, you know, get back to get back to my roots, you know, kind of just get back to, you know, remember why I love to do this. Um, and, you know, I was – after that Terrence fight, I was, I was ready to hang him up and be like, man, maybe I don't have a chin. Maybe I can't take a shot anymore. Um, I even like went back to work with my brother and my dad at the construction site. And I was like, fuck man, this is, and then, uh, I talked to my coach, uh, Ray Longo and, um, I, I was just talking to him and, uh, he told me, he was like, we're not going out like this. Uh, he, he told me that it, he believes in me that I have a lot of talent and that I could beat a lot of guys in the UFC. Um, and then we got to work, man. And, and that construction site sucked, man. I was, I was like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so I got back to the gym. Uh, I got back to the gym, and uh, Ray wanted me to really uh, work on my boxing. Uh, so we kind of just really uh, dialed in on, on our on my boxing. Uh, we we had we started this boxing class at at, uh, at Longo's gym, and we kind of just cut the cage into four quarters. Uh, so it's like closed quarters boxing, um, and it's really forces you to uh, you know focus on your, your defense, and you get a bunch of looks. And uh, just building that awareness, and um, I always I always mess around with coach because I love Muay Thai, I love kicking people, you know I love kneeing people. I'm like coach, come on, I got too many weapons just to be boxing, uh, but he really wanted me to focus on my hands, and um, you know I, I'll I'll do I, coach Longo has my complete trust, so uh, I I focus on my boxing, and then ever since that you know my last three fights. I've been knocking everybody out with my hands. 
So I'm like, you know, Ray Longo, you tell me what to do. Make me the next Long Island champion. Let's do it. So uh, I put my, my trust in my coaches. I got great training partners up here. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm ready to uh, put on another great fight. Well, no, this that one coming me. up, but this dude yeah, is bro. another banger, bro. So, like, this is another fucking dog fight. You get past this guy, you knock this dude out. Like, bro, I'm pumped to see it. But, yeah, Bags, what were you going to say? Yeah, I was Mike? just going to say, this tells me, like, you know, confidence is contagious, right? Like, obviously, you were down in the, in the fucking dumps, you know, doubted every fucking ability you'd ever had at that point, right? You went back to work with the fam, and then all it took was a little bit of, like, all right, Bro, I've been here. I've seen I've seen this before, right? Like I've seen this mentality get into guys' heads. They start to pump you up a little bit. You start to perform a little bit better and then all of a sudden your own fucking confidence skyrockets and your game completely changes. Yeah, 100% man and and uh it's just it's just this team, you know, the Saralongo fight team, man. I remember Aljamain talked to me. Um, you know, I, I remember when Aljamain got knocked out by Marlon Moraes. And it was like a, a very scary knockout. And then after the, after he got knocked out by that, he went on this run right to the title. And he was like, listen, I, you know, I, I got knocked out. I, and he told me about his experience like that. And then Matt Sarah told me some stuff, too, about how he got hit with the spinning back fist in his UFC debut. Um, and that's it, man. You know, everybody's been there. Um, mixed martial arts, you know, everybody loses – um, it's, it's how you come back from those losses that really, uh, you know, define who you are as a man. And, um, you know, I got that in my head and I, and I was, I was going to come back strong and, and, uh, and really, you know, make a run, which is what we're doing. Mike, I want to get your thoughts on this a little bit too, right? Because like you said, you've told me this before, you know, you were like at one point in my career, you know the guys want to be to, to, to wrestle too much or, you know, to, to, to grapple. And like, I knew what my skill set was, but I got away from it a little bit and then, you know, got back to it. And, and what is, what is that, I guess, mindset like when, when people are telling you one thing, maybe, but you know, another, and then kind of like growing from that. You just, uh, you know, take it as it comes to you, but you try to be ready to, you know, see anything that you might not see coming. You try to be ready for things like that and, um, you know, just keep working towards progress. And, um, you know, I, I switch sports, so it's a little bit different, too. And he's still, he, he has a totally different skill set, right? Like, each fighter has different skill sets, and they have different weaknesses. And uh, so, you know, that's where... You have styles as well, different styles and fighters. So he said he likes other weapons, and I don't really kick people anymore, but I still use my legs. Um, I just like the boxing, right? That was my strength. So he's obviously doing well in boxing. Um, he's, he's out there fighting the biggest fights in the world right now. That's what this is, this card, this main uh, card that you're going to be on at MSG. I never fought MSG. Kind of would like to someday, maybe. Uh, so, you know, who knows? But just uh, go win, bro. Don't let him get you, bro. You got to get his <laughs> ass first. Bro, I was hoping you were going to knock out uh, Logan Paul, man. I was, I was, I was like, <laughs> oh, Mike, let Mike, let Mike get in there. <laughs> Yeah, that's a yeah. yeah, that's a tough situation, man. It happens. Maybe I didn't. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they didn't deserve to stand across from me. Uh, they that did. was... didn't. And you got a real fighter now. You and Eddie Alvarez. That's gonna be an amazing fight, bro. Those two. You guys are two legends now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hurt him bad, bro. But yeah, <laughs> you know, I do think I'm gonna hurt him pretty good. So go out there and beat this guy. You know, the same way. Put those paws on him. What do you? What else do you like? Do you? You got some submission wins. You like to grab yeah. people in a dars choke. Yeah, yo, I I love uh, jujitsu. You know, jujitsu is my first love. You know, I wrestled in high school, but I hated wrestling. I only wrestled because it made you better at football. Uh, but then I found uh, jujitsu after I was like done playing sports and stuff. I fell in love with it. Um, so, you know, I got I love jujitsu and then I fell in love with Muay Thai. I went out to Thailand. 
I had a fight out there. I've been there a bunch of times. Uh, I just, the, the art of eight limbs. I love kneeing people, you know, elbowing people. I always loved uh, Crow Cop. I was like, you know, left kick, left kick, cemetery, right kick, hospital. You know, I love that. Um, and now I'm falling in love with the uh, sweet science as well, man. But I think what uh, what I'm what I'm best at is is putting it all together in the cage. Um, and uh, for for a specific opponent, you know, I'm I'm pretty well rounded. I could do everything. Uh, but now at this level, I gotta use use my weapons, use my skills. For a specific opponent, you know, I, I'm I'm prepared for uh, for Benoit Saint Denis. You know, I know he's a southpaw. He's he he loves to keep uh, spamming his left kick, but he's a grappler first. I know he, eventually he's gonna want to grapple. He's gonna shoot on me and try to get it to the to the mat, and I'm prepared for that. Well, so yeah, go ahead, okay. dudes. Let's go. Why why? Bray Longo wants you to focus on boxing so bad, you know, because you like to do everything. You've always been mixed. You know, he says, no, fuck all that. We're going to focus on boxing. You go on a three fight TKO KO streak. Well, and then now I'll, you're about, I'll you know, tell you what wanted me to work on my boxing is because Terrence knocked me out in seven seconds with a one. <laughs> Dude, I was walking. That's a good fucking reason. That's, that's a, a good, good reason. fucking reason. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad he did, man. Because then I started, I started knocking everyone out with my hands. So it all comes full circle. And dude, yeah. in the three, I mean, well, you've already had three, but you know, Valdez. I'm not putting him on the same level as Ottman or Drew Dober. Certainly, you know, not Benoit. But dude, those are three fucking insanely banger fights. Uh, do you like that type of fight? You want to go in there and like do this type of shit now? You just want to go bang? Like I know Ben Wobble will shoot, but yeah, you know I I want to uh, I want to test myself against the best fighters in the world. You know I think uh, I think this this guy just excites me. You know these uh, I don't care. You know that he's not ranked. You know Benoit's he's not a ranked fighter, but he's the kind of fighter that excites me. You know he's on a, a four fight winning streak with four finishes. You know, two submissions, two knockouts. He's well-rounded. Um, nobody wants to fight him. You know, he's almost like the boogeyman of division. And that's those are the kinds of things that excites me. I'm like, like nobody wants to fight this guy. Hell yeah, I'll fight him. Um, and then, and then again, you know, proving people wrong. You know, being the underdog, uh, and uh, and showing, you know, showing. But this fight, really, what I'm really going out there to show is uh, my championship potential, man. I think a lot of people just know me as like a, an exciting fighter, a brawler, but I want to go out there and just show, you know, how well-rounded I am and show that I'm I'm a true contender. You know, I'm ranked now um and I I want to uh I want you know, I want to set I got my my sights set on the title now. I think I'm, you know, three, four fights away from from being in the, those talks. Um and I want to show that in this fight. You could. That's You're always one fight that. away. You're always one performance away from everything changing instantly. And that all you got to do is just you go out there and you make them know why you the overdog every time. Like where the, the odds change, the odds can change on the spot. You got to tell them why you're going to, I mean, like, right? You, you can't just be like, oh, here's my game plan. Here's what I'm going to do. Because then a guy can listen to it and do something about it. But you gotta have them tricks in in your bag, up your sleeve, and so you can just change the odds. Right now, sitting on the couch, you gotta let the world know. I mean, I I missed out on training tonight, but I feel great. I go win my fight right now, tomorrow, the next day, every day, right? Every day. Let's every go. damn day. Every damn day. I'm I'm coming. I'm a, I'm gonna beat this guy's ass. Let's go. Let's go. go. Uh, <laughs> so Matt, how much how much film work goes into it, right? Because you are you're you're studying for a specific opponent, right? Your two losses were on short notice, so you don't have that opportunity. So so how how seriously do you take that? Yeah, you know, I watch all his fights, um, and uh, I you know I really just to pick up uh, tendencies that he has. I watch him fight it, my opponent fighting uh, orthodox fighters. And I just noticed that he loves to spam this left kick. He's just left body kick, left body kick. So I'll be prepared for that. 
Um, and then it helps with uh, my visualization as well, you know, watching watching what he does uh, when he just gets announced. You know, I, I see that all in my head, and I watch the fight over and over in my head. Um, and, you know, I, I'm prepared for him, man. Um, I, don't, I don't love to watch uh, tape, honestly, but I do it every fight. I have to. Uh, my brother forces me to. Longo forces me to. And, and I, watch, I watch enough to, uh, to uh, definitely just visualize and, and, and see what he's bringing. Yeah. So, so Mike, what was your thoughts on, on watching tape? Because there's, there's two camps here, right? I've talked to um, John Jones for one is, is one that, that knows every fucking tendency that his opponent could possibly have. Um, Cheeto Vera is another one like that. Mm -hmm. But then I think we talked to Brandon Moreno and he's like, I really don't like to watch much tape. A couple other guys mm -hmm. like don't want, like to watch much tape. Mike, what's your thoughts on that? Do you like to watch a lot of tape or not? Because well, you also don't want to get too in your fucking head either. Right, but if there's not a lot of um, tape of him losing, like, it, you know, sometimes you fight guys who lose before, so, you know, you get to see some tape. I like to watch the fights where they get beat. <laughs> I make sure I watch those so that I just do the same thing and repeat it. But, uh, you know... And then I kind of don't watch a lot. Um, I just want to be ready for whatever at any time using my spider sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that too. Like, I thought the the hardest part was when I fought Drew Dober, and I was like watching all Drew Dober's fights, and I'm just watching this motherfucker like knock everyone out. Yeah, like yeah. just melt people. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, oh shit, I gotta fight this guy. <laughs> But uh, but then I just gotta I remind myself I'm like yo he's not fighting me, those guys who he's knocking out that's not me, and um, but I I, I, I never watched Luke Rocco versus Paulo Costa I never saw it. No, you should have watched that. That's an actual banger. <laughs> Even, whether you're gonna fight him or not, it's actually fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> all I saw was the picture of Luke just rubbing his bloody face all over Paulo Costa. That's all I saw. <laughs> So, you know, yeah, I, I, I do I, find that that interesting. I won the matchup. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. Is that I didn't even yeah. watch the most recent fight, but yeah. Plus, plus, that's different, right? Like you talking about somebody that can ground and pound and fucking take them down, and you just punching each other in the fucking face, right, like right. yeah, you know. I still think about it sometimes because I'd be like, I, I don't want nobody to have the excuse, like, oh, you're lucky in MMA. All right, but here's a question, Mike. Now you got Eddie Alvarez on tape, right? He was on your fucking card. Have you watched any of that? Are you going to or no? You don't give a fuck. I know you've watched it. No, I did. I watched uh, I know I you watched had. versus Chad Mendes. My mom yeah. actually put it on. I was just sitting on the couch. So I was just like, all right. <laughs> Nothing like your mom watching the fucking bare knuckle boxing while you're just hanging around the house. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, she was, she was watching it just so that, uh, you know, I would – Study it, and then I'm, and then we watched me versus Luke, and it just looked way more like, <laughs> come on, get him, dog. You <laughs> will <laughs> <say. laughs> So Matt, my boy asked me to ask you this: eating a slice with Donald Trump or fist fighting Travis Kelsey? What you doing? Oh man, I mean the slice with Donald Trump all day. I'm hungry. Right. Bro, I'm so fucking hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm about to just... Uh, uh, I'm so fucking hungry. I'm at the point where, like, that's all I think about. I'm like, all right, let's just finish camp, do everything right, you know, cut this weight, and then make weight. No matter what happens, I'm going to be eating, baby. I'm going to be eating whatever I want. And I can't right, so where do you train out of? Where do I train out of? Yeah. Uh, Sarah Longo fight team, uh, Long Island, New York. Yeah. Okay, Long Island. I was about to say, you're probably going to hit up some New York pizza after, but you already got that anyway. Yeah, 100% going to get some pizza, but I'm a big bacon, egg, and cheese guy. How I much love... are you down already? How much weight are you already down? Um, Man, I, I probably I get up to like 185, like 190, but so you're like, like you – 
179 or 178 or 7 right now, and you got to go to 55? No, because you say you got 19 pounds to go. So yeah, you're like 173? 174. Okay. Hopefully, t- hopefully tomorrow I'll be like 173, maybe 170. Because <laughs> you said you're so hungry right now, so damn, you really start. How much time do you need to cut weight for a fight? Um, dude, I'm not a, I'm not a short notice guy. I need, I need my time. Uh, like that's why I always, uh, I always kind of choose, I choose a month and I'll be like, I'm be fight ready in this month. Like just for this fight, like I knew, uh, UFC was coming to Madison square garden in early November. So I was like, I'm going to be fight ready for that. And I probably, I probably got like seven, six, seven week notice for this fight, but I was already training for it. You know, I knew that I knew that they were going to be here so i'm uh probably like two months 10 weeks 10 weeks so i got a question for everybody here but i want to hear matt first (laughs) because i've had this kind of conversation with several people especially with 294 right you had Oliveira back out you had costa back out in title spots right obviously you were fighting islam they were fighting uh islam for the title the winner of Hamzat obviously got a title. They're supposed to get a title shot. So it, it, be, it, it kind of opens up this question of like, how ready should people stay within their weight class to be able to fight on 14 days notice, right? Or are we going to get into this era of people now starting to deny fights on last minute notice because everybody seems to be losing? You see what I'm saying? So there's like two things there. Do you stay ready? to fight last minute or does do people really just start passing up on those opportunities because it's just it, it's too much on the body late replacements are statistically like it's ridiculous right. it's long, and, it's and ridiculous. matt, matt it's said two of his ridiculous. losses were last minute right yep. so like yeah, yeah i want to hear matt's thoughts on that first i think every every fighter is different you know everybody's different um i think it's depending on on how much weight you have to lose to really uh make the weight um but like like again you know uh i thought if if usman had a full camp i think he each my have you know we already saw volkanovsky has a full camp that's a crazy fight you know and he's close to winning that fight um you know for me every fighter is different but for me i know that i'm not a short notice guy i like my time but also they've never thrown you know a couple million dollars at me you know right Right, like, big fucking difference. So you like, got ready for them to call you and be like, "Yo, we need you to show up next week." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you got one week. I'm gonna cut twenty pounds in this week, and then I'm in there. No man, I I don't know, but we'll see if they. I mean, hopefully, eventually, we get to that point where they want to throw throw a couple million dollars at me to take a short notice fight, and then I'll have to make a decision then. Um, but you know, I think it's, it's just every every fighter is different. No, it's hard. I mean, look, you're now in the top ten. Like that's 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 an opportunity. Like that's always an option now, right? Like you're a fucking top ten guy. You could have potentially gotten that call if a couple of guys would have said, "Hey, nah, nah, nah," you know, I'm out, whatever. Like it could have happened. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I guess I got to start shifting my mind. <laughs> just start thinking about it at least, Mike. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Yeah. um... David Feldman calling me right now about next week instead. It just I'll just go for next week. I'll cut I, what I got like fifteen. I got like fifteen pounds maybe to one seventy five. No, it's got to be more. What am I? No, I'm ninety. I got twenty pounds. Yeah, you there? That's, yeah, I'm there. Only twenty pounds. I'm there. No, Matt, I want to run. I want to. I want to run a quick segment with you. Thirty seconds or less. You tell me how you would beat this person. All right. And then I'll move on to the next one. All right. How would you beat Patty Pimblet? Knockout. <laughs> First round. First round knockout. Love it. How would you beat uh, Oliveira? Um, knockout. <laughs> First round? <laughs> no, no. I think maybe second round, Oliveira. Right. Michael Chandler. Knockout, first round. First round. Bobby Green. 
Ooh. I, you know, I'll, I'll submit Bobby Green just, just for, just for fun. You know, gotta show that I'm well rounded. Just for the LOL. Yeah. After three first round knockouts, you gotta show something else. <laughs> <laughs> Islam. Islam, I, I gotta knock him out, man. He's, you know, gotta show, remind him that he's mortal. I think, I think that's the only way to beat it. Somebody needs to knock him out. Like, that's the only way you're going to beat the guy. Someone has. Yeah, yeah. He got yeah, knocked true. Like, true. His, second, his second UFC fight, which yeah. I think really probably probably kind of molded him into the monster that he is now. You know, he kind of realized that he was, you know, mortal. He could get knocked out just like everybody else, and that probably fueled him uh, to make him to who he is now. Yeah. Which is the beautiful thing about the sport, right? Like, mm-hmm. everybody's got great skills across the board when you get to the level that you're at. And it's like, once you once you face defeat in a certain way, you've got to be able to come back from that and figure out how you don't face it in that, in that exact same way again. I love yeah. the sport, yeah. yeah exactly, it. man. There's, there's too many ways to, like, lose in mixed martial arts. Uh, that's why you don't see many, many guys uh, undefeated uh, in, in MMA unless – Unless you're Khabib and you just don't want to challenge yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Bags, I don't want to interrupt your segment at all. Go ahead. Like, I We're definitely done. want to talk on that subject because I put a tweet out about this and, like, I, they've been saying this forever. What do you think about this, Matt and Mike and everybody? But for the longest time, it was always like Khabib. They always said Islam would take over his spot, right, when he left. Like, they kind of paraded him around as, like, this is the actual – this is the real prodigy. It's not even Khabib. And people kind of like just dismissed it. Like he, you know, Martins knocked him out. He's not undefeated like Khabib. He's not as dominant. Uh, it's starting to look like he might be the better version of Khabib by far. I mean, Khabib's only striking was essentially just based off pressure and like faint over or faint level change overhands, like stuff like that. It was just goofy stuff to get him back to where his wheelhouse was grinding your face into the fucking ground. But now Islam can do both. I mean, it's a death sentence that dude gets you down, but now he head kicks people, he's knocking people down, all are very knocked down. Who do you think's better? Is Islam a better version of Khabib, or are they just not even comparable? Khabib be wrapping Islam up. <laughs> that, that's the interesting part. Yeah, big, bro- big brother strength. But I think, I think Islam is better than Khabib. Yeah. And I just... I, I think he's got he's got better striking, uh, and he still's got the ground game. He's got better submissions, uh, and and I like I like the way he talks. You know, I, the, my one thing about Khabib was like a lot of people say he is the goat, but uh, he's not he's not my goat because if he was for him to be the goat, I would have wanted him to go up to one seventy and fight Usman. If he would have been like because he ran through the one fifty five division. And and if he would have went up and challenged himself, been like I want to fight Usman at 170, even if, even if he lost that fight, I would have been, I would have respected that a lot more, uh, you know, just to get a challenge. Um, and and I like how Islam's Islam's already talking about wanting to go up a weight and uh, challenge himself more. So that's just my opinion. No, I I agree though. I mean, there's a lot of people on the internet that you can't say anything bad at all without them saying like you're hating on somebody but dude longevity Khabib maybe one of the maybe the most dominant fighter of all time but he is not he's maybe five uh in the goat list I put Aldo uh Anderson GSP John Jones all ahead of him Mighty Mouse DJ, what do you think he's like what six, do you think, he's like uh, six. I think you just named a lot of really good fighters man They're, they did it I'm still doing it Matt's still doing it. He's still we still proving shit out here. Um, I don't I don't get to do jujitsu like I used to. I just rather box. It's just totally different sport, really. When you mix them, yeah. uh, we you know I know that there's boxing in MMA, but if I go to what the if- MMA gym and they get to do everything like Leoto Machida, it's just way different. What about uh, you? Ever think about doing the bare knuckle MMA like Masvidal's organization? No, I mean, <laughs> not really. I haven't. Uh, I mean, I love I love the boxing. I really do. You know? yeah. And if an MMA uh, fighter wants to fight me in the streets, and 
It's going to be a problem. <laughs> I got it's like if we fight behind the Seven Eleven, I'm in. Have you ever grappled Gordon Ryan? No. Yeah, that was. I was like, damn, I got to get back on the jujitsu mats, man. Like, is somebody yeah, well, he, can me and do that. Yeah, yeah he's the best. Mm. I guys, said we Ryan should... this time and not Ramsey. Ah, uh, Ramsey's better. <laughs> Dude, Ramsey should dead ass fucking color commentate a card. That would be so fucking funny. He's actually somewhat knowledgeable, but just hearing him like, oh, what the fuck are you doing with the takedown or something like that would be funny as fuck. Uh, uh, shit. Wait, what? Uh, Gordon, you're saying Gordon Ramsay? Yeah, yes, Gordon Ramsay. dude. He loves MMA. Yeah. Dude, uh, he'd be, be funny as fuck just doing like his Hell's like, Kitchen thing. But look, 33%, I looked it up, 33% late replacement win ratio. Yeah. So one out of three. Uh, real quick, I'm going to grab two beers. We should talk about the John Jones shit because we were getting yeah. into that right when you hopped on here, Matt. We'll grab two beers, be right back. But we should dive into that because people right. are bitching. They're calling Stipe a bitch, which I find just bizarre. Ridiculous. Like, Ridiculous. bro, that's that. he's a fucking national hero up until a week ago. What the fuck are you guys yeah. talking about? Dude, the only fight that makes sense for Jones or Stipe was that one. It was that yeah. one. Be right back. Yeah. So, you know, obviously John tore his peck. We're talking about eight months recovery on that. And then you, I'm assuming, I'm assuming the eight months is, is just, you know, straight recovery. So then you got to go into a camp. You got to get ready again. So we're probably 12 months out of this fight, right? Does it happen? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, man. I don't know. I hope so. I hope hope so. so Like all this, all this, there's a lot of hype for this fight. Um, it's so disappointing. Like I'm still, like I still can't believe that 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 fight's off. But uh, you know, it is what it is. That's a fight game. You know, people get hurt. Um, but I I agree. I, I think I think that's the fight to make. You know, they're both they're both you know uh, arguably like the greatest you know goats. Um, that's for sure the fight to make. And I I think Stipe's got to wait till John's. John's healthy. You know, if Stipe would have stepped up, more respect to him. But I get it. I get it. You know, he doesn't have to fight. He's Stipe's uh, the best, you know, the heavyweight uh, champion there was. You know, he's got the most title defenses at heavyweight. Um, I think he wants to wait for this this big fight against John Jones. So I, I respect. And Stipe's the man. You can't hate on him. Look, when you're, when you're at John and Stipe's level, you get to pick and choose, right? And that was the fight that they both wanted for a very specific reason, right? Like the greatest heavyweight, the greatest light heavyweight. Let's let's just fucking find out right now. Even even at you know a, an advanced stage or, or an older age, let's fucking find out. To for, to people for people to say that Stipe should fight Aspinall or fucking Sergey is absurd to me. St- you know, Stipe would not have even come back, other than the fact that John said, I want this fight, right? Like, that's the only reason Stipe come back. That's the only reason. Why would he fight somebody else in the interim? Yeah, I agree. I mean, he doesn't have to, you know? Nah. He's already... He doesn't he's... do anything for Stipe to come back and beat Tom, Tom Aspinall. And it's the same thing when we talked to fucking John, you know, Mac, when we talked to John and talked about, you know, Sergey and, and Aspinall and the, and the heavyweight class, it was like, bro, what do I have to prove? Like... I want to fight Stipe for a very specific reason, right? Like, I'm not interested in fighting fucking Aspinall. Now, that may change if Aspinall or, or Sergey wins in a dominant fashion, right? And John comes back a year from now. And maybe Stipe says, hey, you know, you know what? I waited around. I'm 43 now. Like, I'm not interested. Like, then maybe that becomes a different discussion. But as of right now, I just don't see any reason for either him or John to fight anybody else. No, and this is like the type of thing that like I feel like a lot of times fans don't understand. Like, it's not always about like just glory. Like, it should be the it should be Sergey versus no, it fucking shouldn't, dude. Like, are you fucking kidding me, Sergey or Tom? I really like both fighters. Believe me, actually, I yeah. love this fight. This fight's a fucking banger. Great, great, but, dude. Fight. To put them on the same scale to act like you need to go out there and like defend something against those guys you are on a completely different tier we're talking about two of the best of all time let alone like a heavyweight you know like bro 
the fuck you talking about? You go from Francis, Daniel, Daniel. So, dude, here are Steve Bay's last fights. Junior Dos, uh, dude, I could start way lower than that. This Some is people don't need Mark Hunt, Andre Orlovsky. Fab- go ahead. Some people don't need the opportunity, I guess. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, yeah. I would have been like, all right, I got a new opponent. I don't think, you know, I might, it might not be Eddie. He he might tore his peck. If John tore his peck, then Eddie might tore his peck. And then who I'm going to fight in Bear It don't matter. Don't matter. I mean, there, there's got to be like a movie. I don't know. I haven't watched like all the Rocky movies. Don't kill me. But uh, there's got to be like a boxing movie or something somewhere where a dude comes out of retirement to fight his one rival. Like, that's what this fight was about. It's not about fucking Stipe coming out and proving he's still... He's not even a champ. He lost to Francis last. But yeah. you look at his resume, dude, to put them... I, I just don't understand how you could flip on Stipe. The fight was Jones Stipe for, like, goat status at heavyweight. That was it. So if the old guns aren't going to, you know, they will only want their legacy fight, cool. Shut the fuck up. Aspinall yeah. and, and Sergey is a fucking banger, dude. And their fight average time is, like, under... It's, like, 2 minutes and 33 seconds combined, bro. Yeah, that that new fight Aspinall and Sergey is a, is a sick fight. It's just it's it's just not like the the casuals won't like recognize it like a like a Jones and Stipe, but the but the people who really know know uh, you know MMA know that that this is you know two future champions. You know one of these guys or both of these guys eventually were going to be champions, uh, and I guess it, they just you know sped it up. Yep. I'm, yeah, one of my favorite things Yoel said when we had you know Mike and Yoel um, on the podcast, they were messing around. Was when he goes, "Oh, the Russia guy," and he like smiles at the camera, bro. He fucking loves Sergey. Sergey, he's gonna blow up if he can, uh, you know, start keep laying some people out. Holy shit! Oh, dude. He's got the loudest hands I've ever heard. Uh, the fire. monster man, just yeah, watching him like shadow box on the beach is scary. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> no shark threat in the beach today, boys. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about uh, UFC 295. This is the first time, because we always go through a card, but this is the first time that we've had somebody fighting on the card actually have to call the card. So, Ooh. Mac, tell me this. is Or, Matt, are you the first fight on that card? I don't think so. Second? Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think I might be the first fight on the main card. See, that's what I've got, but I've only got one, two, three, four, four fights on that. What are you looking at? Yeah. Is it usually five? I'm on fightodds.com. He's I mean, either I the stake.com since they sponsor us, but he's first fight main card. That could okay. change, but as of right now, he's first fight main card. Yeah, that might. All right, let's go. Uh, we'll go. Look, we'll go. Matt, uh, Perry, Mac, and then I'll go. So here we go. UFC 295. We got Matt Frivola against uh, St. Denis. What you got, Matt? I'm, I'm going to go with the steamroller. <laughs> <laughs> By devastating KO victory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Mackenzie Dern and uh, Jessica Andrade. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think it's going to be Mackenzie Dern. I think that she's, uh, she's like, younger and she's coming and uh, – Andrade's like nasty. She's been so good for so long, but I think uh, you know her time has probably come, came and gone. And Dern's coming. Are you single or no? No, I'm married. But ah, okay. I, hear you. <laughs> I was just I was gonna go in a different direction, but I'm not going to now. All right, <laughs> Tom Aspinall minus one thirty one against Sergey. What you think? Uh, I think, I think, uh, Sergey, I think Sergey's, uh, he's too big. He's too powerful. Uh, and at heavyweight, sometimes that's all, that's all you need. You know, um, Aspinall is like so athletic and light on his feet though. And I do like that Aspinall has that jujitsu. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I'm a big, I like Sergey. I just think he's, he's fun to watch. He's heavy handed. He's, I don't see anybody beating him. Pereira and uh, Yuri for the title, 205. That's an interesting one, man. Uh, I'm going with Yuri just because he's a samurai and I think he's cool as shit. 
Um, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Love God, it. this card. This card's going to be wild. It is going to be good. Mike Perry, you ready? Yeah. Matt, <laughs> Matt Frivola against uh, St. Denis. Man. My my heart says hey, hey, and Saint Denis is minus Saint Denis is minus two oh five by the way, Mike. <laughs> That's a tough fight for you, Matt. Let's go USA all day, Matt Frivola. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mackenzie Dern and Andrade. Uh man, we all want to see. I, I think Andrade might be tough, but didn't she just lose to somebody? If she just yeah. lost, yeah. or has she been killing it? I don't get it. He said she, he was on top, so maybe I don't watch the women's fights enough to make a valid entry point on this one. <laughs> She's just been bouncing. Let's, let's go by then, then Mike. Let's just go by looks. Mackenzie Dern or, or Andrade? <laughs> uh, it looks like Andrade going to win the fight. That's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a fighter, right? <laughs> All right, Aspinall or or uh, Sergey? I think Sergey. Damn. Everybody taking the dog tonight. All right, Alex and uh, Yuri. I think Yuri. Ooh. All right, Mac Malley. God, is nobody going to fucking go against Frivola here? Frivola against Saint Denis. You know, I don't know much about this for Vola guy. Uh, I would, I would but... throw it on my parlay, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, so here's my thing about that one. Um, so, I mean, like, dude, I'll always keep it real. Matt, like, maybe a couple fights ago. Here's why this one's so important in my eyes. Like, dude, St. Denis 12-1. and one. This dude's a fucking monster. Uh, he gets in brawls. And I think you've proven don't get in fucking brawls with this guy for Vola. You know, I think uh, you've hit your stride. You've found your, you know, uh, Ray telling you to work on your boxes. Something, bro. Something's clicking. I yeah. think you're the one to, to turn him back. So, yeah, I'm going to legitimately take Matt Favola by That's probably cool. by finish. Because that dude fucking bangs way too Let's much. St. Denise is way too happy to get in a trade war, and you don't want to do that with someone who just deleted Drew Dober. He, he, thinks he, he thinks he's untouchable, man. Like, he thinks... He thinks he's uh, he thinks he can't be beat. A lot of a lot of his like French fans think he can't be beat, and uh, I love I love fighting guys who think that like he and uh, I love serving him some humble pie, showing him that he can he can be beat. He's he's just a man, you know. He ain't no god of war. He's just a man, and uh, and uh, I'm a I'm a humble him. I, Here's the I, thing, Matt. It's not just a Saint Denis thing. It's a fucking French thing. Yeah, we cre we created democracy and crepes. They, they think they think they can win every fucking one don't. until they don't. La chaufa don't want croissant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mac, Mac. We got Mackenzie and uh, Jessica. Jessica has been trying to find a home since she kind of lost title opportunities. She's had a bunch of them. She's one of the she's one of the only fighters in UFC history, if not out of three, I believe, that's got knockouts in three different weight classes. She's a staple of the women's divisions, but she's been bouncing back and forth between each division lately, like trying to find where she's comfortable. And I think the problem is women, the 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 higher tier fighters who she's always going to fight have kind of figured out her style. Joanna did a long time ago. It's just who can implement it, and people have been getting better. Where I think she could get in trouble is Mackenzie doesn't like getting hit. She's a pretty girl, beautiful girl. You know, she gets fucking rocked. She doesn't necessarily like it, but she's a dog. I'm still going to take Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie, Mac is single. Matt is not single. He's married, but Mac is single, by the way. And that's debatable. Tom Aspinall and Sergey. This is one of those ones, bro, where all time you should sit there and say Tom Aspinall, if he could survive, should win this. But we haven't really seen uh, Sergey get drawn out that long. I think he's too much of a powerhouse. That dude's a diesel engine. If you don't get out of the fucking way quick, I, no, too much power. Um, possible guillotine, like jump a gilly or some type of sneaky submission from Tom Aspinall, but it's probably going to be a first-round KO for Sergey. Alex and Yuri. 
Uh, Yuri gets hit too much. Does he even train with the gym? I don't know. You only ever see him like just punching like shit <laughs> outside his house. Now, I love Yuri, so let's not get that twisted. But Alex Perea being, he's the more chin. They're both chinny. Fuck. I don't know. We haven't seen enough at Perea at, at, at light heavyweight, but I think his technical boxing skill will keep him out of the way enough. Uh, where I would lean him, but dude, what the fuck? How are you supposed to train for someone like Yuri? He's you like, know, I've been fucking slicing these... watermelons in half with a sword. And you're like, okay, you so you're easily to pick either hook? way. You could easily pick either way on e any Yeah. Fight. Yeah. I mean, Yuri's just such an enigma, but I, I'll lean Perea based off the stuff we've watched this sport this long. He's got the boxing credentials. He's got the kickbox. He should be able to tighten it up and not get caught with something crazy. But I don't anticipate that. I think they're going to beat the shit out of each other for as long as someone's chin holds up. But well, that's I'll real, though. They're both just holding holding the title till sweet dreams. Jamal Hill gets back. So underrated, bro. Jamal is so underrated. That dude. When's he back off that ACL? Next. Is know. he? Long time. But nah. he should be next, right? Like yeah, if, ACL is ACL six months, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it was his Achilles. Oh, was it his Achilles? Yeah. Oof. That's a bad injury. Do you, so you take Jamal over either winner? Yeah, I love Jamal. He's a man, and and he's he's just got like dynamite in his hands. Like he's he's uh yeah, I like him. It's so low key. It's so low key. And I think he knows yeah. it, too. Oh, yeah. That's why he always does the gut picks. <laughs> oh, look, I'm not even trying. Ha, ha, ha. Fucking KO. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. What about your picks, Bags? Let me get your pick. Okay, so um, what was the fucking card? Okay, was, Favola. Uh, Matt Favola yeah. versus uh, St. Denis. <sighs> he's trying to decide if he's going to get his ass kicked for his answer or not. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think when I'm gonna have to run into Matt. <laughs> I'm coming to Nashville, bro. <laughs> I'm in Florida. That's good. Uh. I'm gonna take Frivola, baby. I'm taking the USA fucking steamroller in MSG by KO within the first two rounds. Mm -hmm. Get on the steam train or get the fuck out of the way. All right, let's Mackenzie go. Dern. <laughs> let's go. Or Dern and Andrade. Dern's way too fucking cute to lose. Uh, watch him a man a little bit longer. And eventually we're going to hook Dern and Mac Malley up, and that's going to be like the, the overdog's whole deal. I claim to fan. Mac and Mac. I don't go. know. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll discuss it. Uh, All right, we'll discuss it. <laughs> Aspinall versus Sergey. Sergey hits like a fucking Mac truck, and if he catches fucking Aspinall, as good as Aspinall is, I don't give a fuck who it is. They can't stand up for those punches. It's like when, uh, I'll tell you this, because you know what's coming up this weekend, which our episode won't be out, but Tyson Fury and oh, Ngannou's God. coming up, right? Mm -hmm. and Tyson said, no fucking heavyweight can take these hands. He said, I'm going to hit you with 20 stones, 20 stones, 20 stones. I'm going to drop you to the right. And Sergey's the same fucking way, dude. Nobody can take those hands. Yeah. I, yeah. I, we need to find someone who can't. Someone beat him. Someone. I feel like they're a little different. Tyson Fury's punches and Sergey and the four ounce UFC gloves. And I've seen different punches. Absolutely. Because Fury be swagging and and tagging, you know. But yeah. he. Dude, I mean, he did. Sergey's punches sound like this. That's what that's. That's what fucking. It looks like they sound like, like that. Oh, that's dude. Awesome. Okay. And so then was Fury old. and Padeda. Yeah, Fury and Pareda. I like Alex, man. Alex's boxing right now from the videos that I'm watching looks so fucking clean. Mm -hmm. And he looks strong. Uh, I just, uh, I don't see Alex losing this fight, man. I think if Alex keeps it on the fucking feet, like, I don't see him losing this fight. I think he's got, I think, I think he found his, his weight at 205. Versus 185, man, uh, he looks like a fucking force to be reckoned with right now, and his hands look so good. His his win over Jan is way more impressive than people Huge. want to admit. Huge. I feel like his videos with the with 
like when he be hitting the mitts, like he be real stationary. Like maybe he's just showing it's what he wants you to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he's not. But he, you gotta be. Should I walk around and like and feel free to move about where I'm standing when I hit? So I don't know. Yeah. He look, I don't know. He looks sharp as fuck. He's and he weird. does does look good at two hundred five. Like mm-hmm. I think him cutting that was too much weight for him too to be much. cut. One eighty five. Yeah. Jan looks like, good, so he had good. a good fight with Jan Blakovich. Mm-hmm. That was, like, that was more impressive to me than going three rounds with him and still winning. I, I thought that was really impressive. A lot of people kind of like, oh, got to do something Dude, more. Dude, he went to 205 and fought one of the best fucking guys in the division. Like, it's like second guy. Yeah. yeah. All right. But, fellas, yo, thank you for having me, guys. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I'm gonna go have a yogurt. What's up, Cedricus? Oh. What up, bro, bro? My bad. I'm trying to hurry and park the car real quick. Whatever. I just got done picking up some food. What'd you get? Oh, that food. The green grass. <laughs> oh, word. Oh, dude, we smoke weed. <laughs> we smoke weed. Oh yeah, I just have to pick up some gas. You feel me? Hell yeah, bro. Oh, it's, nice good. Win it's, it's nice to uh, officially talk to you, man, and meet you. Uh, yeah, man, I know nice. you trained with the homies. Yeah, man. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna be down there after this. Um, get a little nicks and next out the way, little, little stuff out the way. Don't be back down there working with y'all, bro. So yeah, when you be down there in fusion, bro, I'm gonna be down. If you know, be be on to get some work in with you, man. You know, I like the dog. Oh, Make thank you, you bro. Out, Thank you, man. I appreciate that. You're doing your thing right now. You're getting beating these guys in the UFC. Keep it going. Keep the appreciate train rolling. Man. Yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm, you know, man, like I said, bro, you know, I still got a lot of way to come, still a long way to come, but, you know, I'm starting to understand, you know, grappling is a huge thing in the UFC, and if these grown-ass men want to grab ass all the time, fuck it. I'm just going to play this little game as how I can be able to throw hands on a good little good minute. So, that's the main thing I've been figuring out from the game, like in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, they don't want to slang and bang. They yeah. trying, to, trying to hold on tight sometimes. It's, it's <laughs> that, a crafty move, though. It works. I hear what yep, you're saying. It, it works sometimes. Yeah, it works, bro, but you know, I'm, I'm going to be real with you, bro. Uh, it, it's part of it. You know, you can get those points. You can get, you know, you feel me? You can get that win. You feel me? It looks good in the judges' eyes and everybody else. You can move up the ranking, you feel me? But, you know, about, like, my, you know, I love to strike. You know, that's what made me get to the big leagues and stuff, you feel me? So, I'm just like, nah, bro. My mentality, like, nah, bro. Let's let's just bang it out, Brody. Well, so, like, as someone that's 9-1, and you know, like, that's a pretty high, that's a good record to be in the UFC, especially a few fights in. Like, someone that's 9-1 debuting, a little bit different sometimes, but, you know, yeah. you got, what, like, three, four UFC? You have the Contender Series and yeah. three UFC fights, yep, yep. right? Yeah, dude. So, when you say, like, you like to bag and stuff like that, now you've realized that, you know, the ground game's a little bit more important or you know how yeah so how do you uh walk them into your game plan if they want to yeah. if you want to strike and bang it out right and they mm-hmm. want to either run away and poke and move or they want to grab a hold of you and try to grapple or wrestle uh mm-hmm. how do you make sure that you put on your game plan so kind of sort of like i gonna be real with you like i'm gonna give out game because like i tell people like if you you got to be able to beat my game whatever a lot of these dudes want to grapple and wrestle, but I, what I like to do is go on defense first, and if I know my defense ain't working, all right, fuck it. I'm going to do a little bit of offensive wrestling with you because, like, you see these dudes that went to college, wrestle, you know, high school, whatever, how long they've been wrestling. Them matches are only three minutes long, you feel me? And any wrestling match is pure point blank. So in my eyes, in my mind, I go ahead and put in my head like, all right, then bet. This man only probably only got three minutes of wrestling in the tank. I'm going to give him defensive wrestling and offensive wrestling, so either two things. You're going to out-wrestle me and get in a situation of, like, we're going to scramble or whatever the case may be, or you're going to gas yourself out and you're going to have to stand back up and throw hands. And if you're not used to throwing hands, 
then you ain't going to feel that hard ass breathing and like breathing when it come from the lower part of your stomach and shit. And that's what I feel when I be like throwing hands all the time. I love feeling that burning in the chest and the lower part of my stomach. Feel like I can't pick my arms up with my legs up. And like, you know, like that's when I kind of put in my fighting arsenal. Like if you gas these dudes out just grappling and holding on, you know, doing what they do, you still got to up on them in the striking a little bit. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Yes, I do, man. I, I feel you. I feel you. That's all that you got to work on, right? It's like you. you yeah. So when you train, you would like grapple a lot in the beginning and then you get your striking in. Yeah, because like, you know, be real, like a lot of people ain't expecting me to grapple them. A lot of people expect to out grapple me. But if I out grapple you like right off the rip, then you ain't going to be expecting that. Then hopefully it goes two ways. Like I make you scramble a lot to the point, you know, I make you play that. All right. I got to transition, transition, transition. Now I got to stand back up and strike. Mm. Or it's going to be like, you know, 50-50. We're going to have to go back. Somebody's going to have a stalemate or I'm going to fuck up or you're going to fuck up and make that wrong move. But I'd rather take that chance because it's going to boil down to who got the better cardio. And if I'm already in all these scrambles all the time, 24-7, because I'm going to be real with you. Like, I got a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, but I don't use it. I'm sorry. I really don't use a lot of jiu-jitsu. So... But I be like scrambling more, and I see the scrambling shit makes a lot of jujitsu, like high level jujitsu, do more tired. So I'm, you know, I just started thinking in my head, and then like, hey, what if I start doing this in a fight, and with my training and all this and stuff, like using that like as an advantage type mm. ordeal. That's good. Dude, this is like the worst example ever. But like straight up, you're a pretty good example of how I play UFC video games. Like, dude, I. <laughs> People go like, "Oh, bro, I'm not good. I'm not good at the ground. I can't beat nobody on the ground." I go, it "Doesn't matter. Like, get good enough on the ground. Get some fucking ass up. Beat the shit out of them on the feet where you're good. Exactly yeah. what I do. Yeah. And you've you've done, you know, nine and one. You've really. Yeah, man. Like I tell people, man, I respect all the OGs. Like you, my pair. You feel me? On the OG, like all the OGs that's been in the game. Cause like, I'm still learning while I'm fighting, but I'm still trying to have fun with this. Cause. This shit can be taken away, like, just like that. You feel me? So, no, I, I was, yeah, you feel me? Like, I respect everybody, you know, that's doing this and stuff. So, I just look, and I look how the OGs did it, you know, and how everybody has done it. And I kind of sit back and just take bits and parts of stuff that I learned and seen, you know, and kind of put that in my books. Because, like, I've only been doing this for six years, like, as an amateur and as a pro right now, animated to the UFC. So, I'm not with that cocky talk, whatever. Like I tell people, like, nah, buddy, you know I like to strike, so either we're going to bang it out for 15 minutes or, you feel me, like something's going to happen. But at the end of the day, you're going to feel me. And that's my main thing I like letting people know. You're going to feel me at the end of the day. No, that's real, bro. I mean, I say, fuck that. They ain't taking it away from me. It's You got, you know, I, but like you said, OG, so I'm kind of stamped in. And they gonna have to let me do this shit. This is what they, they let me get too far. So now nah, you you uh humbly coming up, man. You shocking people. You taking and you having good tough fights. You enjoying the whole process of it. You getting your time in the ring. That builds onto your your abilities as a fighter and athlete. Yeah, man. I'm just trying to learn, bro. Like I tell people, like if I gotta go, like you know. I'll praise Allah, you know, he put me in this situation, you know, to get where I need to be. But if I need to be in that ring for 15 minutes and stuff like that, bro, them are a little tests that I got to take. You know, that's going to show, like, the difference between being a man or you're going to be a pussy because I'm not going to lie. A lot of these dudes that I have seen in the UFC that's in my weight class has been pussies. Like, I respect them that they got up there, but I'm not here to grab ass because I, I get punched in my mouth one type of way. Like, oh, I'm going to grab you. No, bro. Like, you punch me. Okay, you see you caught me. Well, fuck it. Let's keep throwing these hands and shit. And if we got to grab for a little bit, whatever, whoop, whoop, whoop. But, man, fuck all that. Oh, I'm going to submit you because I got rock type of deal. Like, I like the, I, I like the feel where you coming from. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like, I, I respect you. But you have to throw these hands. Yeah. Yo, do me a favor real quick, uh, Cedricus. Uh, producer just text me. Can you switch, like, move your camera just look, so we can get like a better view of you? So we just want to make sure you get all the promo you you can possibly oh, get out of this too. Just like, uh, I think that's better. 
Looks He'll good text to me. me. Looks good. Looks good. Anyway, Mike, go what ahead. What are you saying? I know, I know Mike got excited after he was talking, calling everybody pussies and what yeah. the hell Mike's like, Mike's like fucking sits up in his seat. He's like, fuck yeah, yeah, I like this dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, like, bro. So do you like throwing kicks too, though? You like yeah. kicking people in the face, knees and elbows? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, because if I could kick you, bro, like, uh, my, like my old fucking coach told me, if I could kick you, that means I can touch you with my hands. But if I am know I got, like, a weapon that's more at advantage than a lot of people, because, like, you you know, bro, you've been in the top level, and you know, like, a lot of these dudes don't like getting kicked. A lot of these dudes just try to throw hands and stuff and, like, you know, call it a day, whatever, and, like, you know, grab, throw hands. But, like, why when I'm finna play in this game of, like, you know, brawling with you when I don't have to brawl all the time? You get what I'm saying? Now I'm finna kick you and slow your ass down because right. now I can bring you into my world, and now right. we're going to have a little fun. No, I feel you. Yeah, I fucking, I mean, I still like mess around with the MMA stuff. And like when I do a round with an MMA fighter, I might just throw an inside low kick. The first thing I do just to let them know that we doing everything and you ain't got to just box with me. Some people just throw their hands. I yeah. mean, but I don't do MMA no more. I like just boxing. And uh, I mean, I'm running with that. Yep. And, and bro, bro, I respect everybody, like, you know, like, that's doing it because one thing, bro, like, even you, bro, I love to box, but I respect all y'all that can box because I'm going to be rich, bro. I don't really know how to box that well, but one thing I do know how to do it, like, I just love to fight. But, like, when I see you get in there, bro, like, going blow for blow, like, with Michael Page, Venom, and, like, all those dudes, and, like, these dudes, like, I'm like, damn, bro, these motherfuckers going that in this shit. Like, that shit excites me, like, especially when I see the blood and all this because, like, I just want somebody to do that same shit to me. Like, make me bleed, bro, so I can look over my coaches and be like, hey, wipe the blood off and look at him. Fuck it, let's get in there and fight because at the end of the day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut your ass the same way. You're going to make me bleed. I promise you will make your ass bleed. Mm. Love mm. it. That's what I, I like, bro. That's the thing I love about fighting. Like, you know, like, you know, like people see me, like I'm working, you know, I make sure I stay in the gym 24-7, work my ass off, you know. That's like a big thing to me. But the main thing I want everybody to know, like, at the end, he's going to stand and bang with you for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, whatever the case may be, peer point blank, because this what got me to the big leagues, bro. And like I said, if I fuck around and get dropped, stumble, I'm going to stand back up and keep banging out with you. And if you want to grapple, nah, bro, I'm, I'm going to show you some little small tricks that's going to help me get up off the ground. And we're going to keep on fighting and keep on going this and doing it and doing it and doing it. Again and again, for sure. Yep. Yeah. To the end, until it, to the, till the wheels fall off. That's what I mean. Yep. Man. Because if this back in gladiator days, bro, think about it. You gonna grab me the whole fucking time, or you gonna try to beat my ass with your hands and make sure I'm dead? And I can get about this den. And that's how so I kind of think. With that said, like you obviously train that way too, right? Like you have, you go to the gym and you have fights with your boys. Yeah. Well, see, I have fights with my boys, but I have, prop, like, technical sparring. Like, I'm not finna go in there and swing all wild and think I'm the big man in the gym. Nah, we gonna, you know, we gonna have them times they gonna go boom, 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 boom. But it's just to get both of us better or whatever because, like, mm -hmm. sometimes you need to be testing and see how hard you can take a shot and not get pissed the fuck off and be like, man, fuck you, da 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 I want to know if you can take a shot and still come back and be in that calm state. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, okay, bet. Mm -hmm. Let me throw something back to let you know, hey, I'm still here too. Mm -hmm. Dude, right, so I, I got a question here. So What's you're up? from Pensacola, right? Yep, yep. All right, small town. I'm like 30 minutes down the road. So when you're talking about boxing in Pensacola, obviously we're talking about Roy Jones Jr. You spend yeah, any yeah. time down there? Yeah, yeah, me and Ron... Um, Roy love him, man. Like, anytime I need any, like, boxing work, whatever, he said, hey, don't, you know, you welcome to come over there, man. Come get the work, you know, whoop, whoop, you know, do what you need to do. Like, you know, he want to see me succeed and all that stuff, too, and I respect that because, like, you know, like, I'm a young OG, you know, trying to be up there on the top, you know, fly guy, you feel me? I'm trying to be like those dudes, trying to let, you know, stamp me on this. I'm coming in, kicking in the door, like, you know, Wu-Tang type shit. Like, I want you to know, hey, bitch, I'm here. Fuck what you talking about. Like, hey, you're going to you gonna have to shut me the fuck up. But I'm going to shut the fuck up. But I'm going to shut the fuck up 
when I need to because I need to learn the game better. So I'm, that, that's just how I move. So I talked to uh, Andrew Murphy and uh, Kevin Newman. And they said they worked with Roy up there. They're like, yeah, he comes yeah. up, man. He's a good fighter. He's a good boxer. He got a he got a he got a, a hard style to, to fight, you know, as a pro boxer, which is a good thing on, on your part. All right, tell me this though, man. What the fuck was it like on your on your first monster card going to Abu Dhabi, being from Pensacola? I'm gonna be real with you, bro. It was hard as fuck. You know, it was the best experience to go to Abu Dhabi. But when I got booed, the best experience, bro. When I just flicked all their asses off and then I was like, yeah, fuck y'all. I'm still coming back in y'all city. Y'all gonna have to love me and hate me, but fuck you. Here you go. <coughs> well, you were and also that was, They had beef too Moroccan because Moroccan. Abu pulled out the first time. Yeah. So it yeah. was even better. It was, there was like double, <coughs> yeah, satisfactory. Oh, that bitch biting. That bitch biting. Yeah, yeah man. Right. <laughs> this, this, this is like number... This is number five. Since I ain't been able to smoke for 10 days. Hang on. This is number five joint. Is, you know, is he on Bobby that. Green's level? What did Bobby say he smoked? Like 15 blunts a day? Yeah. Listen, listen. If Bobby's smoking like that, Bobby's going to have to sit down and smoke with me because I'm putting at least 3.5 <laughs> in the joints, bro. And, you know, we're going to have to smoke, smoke. You feel me? Hot box and all. You been out roll the window right. down. Shit, I, people be wasting the weed, bro, because I just smoke, like, one little bowl. I'm good for I'm a couple same. hours. You feel I'm me? Yeah. Same. And when people do that, bro, I be laughing because I just be like, I be like this, like, I love smoking in a bowl. I love smoking in a bowl. But, like, sometimes. Mm hmm That's a good point. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> you didn't hear the part. You didn't hear the part when I said that you're passionate about fighting right now and like you are you doing your thing right now and you real like you you giving on your mentality, you letting us know like how it is you think about what you do. I was yeah. respecting that. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man, because like I'm gonna be real with you, bro. I can't be fake. I'm gonna do like that done shit, got into bullshit, but now I'm just a family man trying to take care of his family and build something mm. from me, bro. But I still got that same mentality, like, nah, bro, you ain't gonna feel me. I'm gonna kick in the fucking door just to earn my respect because everybody, you know, a lot of people came there in this fight business, you know, oh, he might make it, he might, 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 might not make it. You know, shit, shit like that. So I had to let everybody know, like, nah, buddy, one loss don't change me, bro. That one loss was a lesson that I need to know. And I needed to learn. So guess what? I said, fuck that. Next fight. I'm going to show y'all. Okay, bet. I'm here to stay. Like, I don't give a fuck what statistics say. Like, I know what I got in me. I got that dog in me. I got whatever I need to bring. Got to win this fucking fight at the end of the day. Well, so I got a question for you real quick. So, like, I'm I'm only here. I'm not a fighter or, like, rich or anything. I'm just kind of just like a hardcore fan. That's why I ended up here. But as far as the community goes, dude, like, you're considered really good. But also, like, you don't have, like, a, some crazy, like, accolades that people are always referencing and stuff. Like, you, you said yourself, you started six years ago. Yeah. What's your story? Because <laughs> I find those, that's usually a lot cooler story than someone that's like, oh, I wrestled since I was fucking three years old. Well, when I started, when I lost a lot of my homies, bro, from getting shot at in Chicago and in Pensacola, bro, like ODing off drugs, being set up by females, you know, like being shot at, you know, because they homie killed somebody or something like that, you know, retaliation type of deal. Like, it kind of made me who I am now. Like, I understand, you know, you can't change certain shit that's going to happen around you, but you can change, like, different, like, ways you can go so i kind of take that drive that what i lost you know what my homies lost what you know what i seen lost you know from love from you know people turning their back on me people i gave my hand and ass and everything to feed but didn't know the whole time it was some fake shit like i just learned to understand like at the end of the day it's life bro and you know i'm gonna get shit happening you know shit gonna happen towards me so I kind of just take that motivation in the fight game. Like, bro, like, I lost a lot of shit to the point, nigga, I became numb as fuck. Like, 
like, man, fuck this shit. Like, I don't know what else I'm going to do. You feel me? Like, fuck it. I'm going to go rob somebody. You know, this might be the end, yada, yada, yada. But then I had to come to my senses. Like, nigga, I lost my same homies thinking like that. And I'm in a better situation and predicament being selfish as fuck because my homies ain't even here no more or they in jail or you feel me? We ain't even cool no more. So, like, I just take those hard times and those times that, you know, I had with the peoples and the homies, bro, and I jump in that ring, bro, and have fun with it because if I could have my homies with me, bro, they'll be my whole damn cheerleader, bro, riots and all this shit. But I don't have them here no more. So, you feel me? I go hard from them in a different way. There you go. Well, dude, you're killing it, man. Nine and one out here, bro. Hey, man, appreciate that, Keep man. So, like That's I tell everybody, message, man, bro. I'm That's still a learning, dope bro. Dope message, man. Yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's not even no message, bro. And you know, I don't want people to take it as like I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm depending on you know my homies leaving me, you know, to show me the way, you know, by me seeing that, by like certain shit happening, and by me seeing it and understanding from a distance. And understanding if they was him, they'll retaliate. But at the same time, they'll tell me or me and the guys will be like, hey, bro, let's think about this shit real quick. Because at the end of the day, it's because of one thing led to such and such. And, you know, like I wanted to crash a few times, bro. I get in my feelings and all this. But all my homies be like, hey, man, shut that shit up, bro. We It's time to go make some money because, like, we can't let these hard times shit fuck with us. We going to have these. So the only thing we know how to do is just have fun in the moment and then just deal with it. Just deal with it when it comes. So you feel me? Like any opportunities I get, bro, I have fun with it because my homies ain't even here. That I can even say I can have fun with them anymore. You get what I'm saying? I got you, man. Damn. For sure. For sure, man. Yeah, I mean... We, we get real on this bitch. Yeah, dog. bro. You I know? fucking ripped down that joint. Hey, and now we got real as fuck man, about we, shit. We out here trying to get to this fucking money all the time. I ain't never got enough of it, but I always got everything I need and could ever want. I got my shit. You know, I, I get what you're saying. You know, I just be chilling at the crib, playing video games, waiting for my chance to punch somebody in their face, bro. Let me get that, that check part. real quick. And then we back to the club, pour some up. We you feel me? Hey, look. For the homies, dog. You feel me? Hey. Here we like go. I tell people, man, like, because at the end of the day, bro, we got to love where we came from. I don't care. Like, I tell people, bro, I don't care if your family was military. I don't care if your family was a silver spoon, bro. If you grew, made a hustle for yourself and you treat people right and understand, like, it's boundaries of certain shit and understand, like, Everybody's just trying to have fun, bro, and make this money and stay out of the way. Like, everybody don't grow up the same, yada, yada, yada. But at the end, everybody's trying to make this money and stay out of the way because guess what? Certain shit that we've seen around us, bro, made us traumatized or made us be like, nah, I can't do it that way, bro. Or I got to turn up some type of way. Or I got to be like, nah, I want to be that one riding Lambos. I want to be the one that woo, 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 woo. And I can show everybody else, like, man, you can make it any type of way because... Niggas told me, everybody told me I was going to be dead in jail. Oh, this fighting shit ain't going to take off. You need to stop doing this. Family told me this. People I thought close to me told me this shit. And I still took that shit and ran with it and said, hey, man, fuck what you talking about. I got a mission. I got to go. And that was to make this money, make sure I got a family that's, you know, taken care of. You know, shit like that. You feel me? And, you know, the homies around that respect me going to tell me when I'm being the right or when I'm in the wrong. And the ones that ain't here anymore, you feel me? I remember they words that we used to talk about and have them talks. Have fun with this shit, but have that respect too because you ain't the baddest person on this planet. There's always something bad in you, but you can beat anybody. You just got to put your mind to it. You feel what I'm saying? Well, you say, no, mama, somebody got to be the baddest. Huh, you feel me? And guess what? I'm going to be the baddest, but I'm going to be the baddest in a humble way because a lot of people don't understand I, like I said, I've only been doing this for six years, so I'm not the type to run my mouth. I'm going to let my hands and everything else do the talking for me and let my work mm -hmm. ethic show you, like, hey, I'm climbing to the top, shorty, and I'm coming. Yeah. Keep it going. Well, so, you got to respect the mentality. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so, man. So was, and it, let's get – I was going to say, let's get some uh, – let's get some picks on some fights right. that, oh, that we got picks. coming up. Okay. Uh, UFC what two ninety five? Yep, yep. Yeah. 
And so Drake uh, is fighting at uh, 155 right now, right? Oh, wait. 155? Yeah, no, 185. It says middleweight. 185. Good God. Yeah. He's a, yeah, big, man. He's a big guy, too. What you weigh? Uh, how much do you cut to get to 85? Like, 10? I, well, I walk around at 201, and it oh. takes me about two days to cut to 185. Okay. Damn. Well, yeah. anyway. I'm, I'm not, yeah, you feel okay. me? Like, I'm, I'm, I, I gotta tell people, bro, like, if I gotta weigh like 220 and all this and shit, and then cut down to 185, I'm not in the fight camp. Bitch, I'm in the weight cut camp. I gotta make sure I'm eating salads and shit. Uh -huh. I gotta make sure I can't eat what the fuck I want. No, bro, I don't think mm. I gotta do just cut this salt down. Now I get in this ring to fight your ass. Abu, mm -hmm. was, Abu weighed in at 215, and I weighed in at 195 the day of the fight, whatever. And you feel me? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to get in there and fight with you. I don't give a fuck how big you is, because if you was on the streets, guess what? Shit, fuck them. Beat your ass tall, short, fat, mm -hmm. skinny. <laughs> fuck all that. You going to get your ass beat some way. Everybody got to fall, Let's damn go. it. Let's go. So, 185. All right, so hey, so we're gonna do this, uh, Cedrigas. We're gonna do thirty seconds. You get thirty seconds. Tell me how you're gonna beat these guys. But we doing picks or are we doing that thing? We're gonna do okay, this. Let's, let's do that. Thirty okay. seconds. Thirty seconds each one. I'm gonna throw out a name. Paolo Costa. How do you beat him? Oh, I'm gonna beat his ass fucking by decision because he's gonna have to throw these bitches to me. Ooh. All right, Cannoneer. Cannoneer, uh, he gonna have to throw them bitches with me, but I feel like I can, I can knock his chin out. Um, you know, no disrespect to the homie, but I feel like I can knock his chin, but it's, it's not gonna be easy. Tough fight. Whitaker. Whitaker, as long as he don't be dancing and moving around and stuff, then I feel like I can knock him out with a head kick. Well, with his same head kick. One, two, head kick um, up high. His signature right. move. Hamzad, who was who was on your card in Abu Dhabi. Um, Chamzad, long as I don't let him wrestle me, whatever, um, I can take him on the feet, whatever. His main goal is to wrestle people in the first round to get them tired and stuff, you know, get them excited. But now, as long as I stop that and do wrestle defense with him, I'm good. All right. Last one. Sean Strickland. How you doing? Sean beating? Strickland. Oh, I just got to listen. For him, he smarts four, but guess what? Joe Chin going to go to sleep, too. I'm going to catch you with that same three like Alex Pereira will catch you and come with a two right down the middle and maybe knee you in your face if you want to wrestle. Let's so. go. <laughs> there you go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> because that Philly shell boxing, you get my saying? If you think that shit works, you know, it works in boxing. But guess what? Only a few people are able to master that. And I've seen those few people. And you're not those few people. So I know exactly how to hit you. The same side or you want which one you want, the left or the right, the lower or the high. All right, matter. slow down, slow down now. No, nah, no, nah, listen, that, nah, nah, that's going, how you do it. You on your way? Yeah, yeah, that's how I'm going to do it to him because, you know, I respect him because me and Sean Strickland talked at the USCPI. Okay, and he even man. said, hey, man, when me and you, I feel like we're going to have to bang it out. And I told him in his face, hell yeah, we're going to have to bang it out because I like your style. You're a crazy-ass white boy that like to fucking fight, and I love that shit. So I know I'm going to have to figure it out, but... Once I figure it out and see how he fights and if he's still fighting like that, because like I told myself, in two years, I'm going to be in the top ten. You feel me? Like, that's mm -hmm. them goals like I got for myself. So, everything, like I told everything, I got to climb up the ladder so my striking going to get better, better, better. So, when it's time me to face these dudes like Cannoneer and all these dudes, Whitaker, I know that's when my time and my striking and everything else is on point. Until then, I'm going to pick the fights that my managers pick for me because they see – what's going, what needs to be done. And my coaches also see what needs to be done and all this and stuff. And if they say this is a good matchup, that's beatable, and then we're not coming in for them to win and shit, then we're going to take that fight and we're going to go balls to the wall with it. Mm. I, bet. I got one. I got, I, I, I know you're like saying you're not calling them. Do you have like any, it's not even, it's not a call out. I'm making huh? that clear. Where would you expect your manager to, what area would you be looking at next? Like who? Anybody hey. at all? Like is there is there like a name you're sometimes like? Bro, nope. That seems guess like what? Right. I don't call out people. At the end of the day, I respect that person I fight because it's a job, and a mm -hmm. grown man got in the cage and fought. So I don't never call out people. You will never hear me. Even when I get to the top tens, bro, you will never hear me call out anybody. Everybody that I fight from young and that's coming up or OGs on these cars, I respect. 
But when we get in that cage, the only difference in this part is that you're going to have to respect me more about me when I throw these hands in front of you. Because mm -hmm. I worked my ass off to get up here, and you worked your ass off too. And you probably been doing this longer than me. So that's that's something I would never do. Like, even when I get to the top, I would never call out nobody. The only reason I said, fuck out, boo, because we got prepared for six months, mm -hmm. and you bagged out two weeks into the fight, bro. And like I said, I'm glad you did that because it was a learning experience. You know, be prepared for short, tall, whatever the case may be, wrestler, yada, yada, yada. I respect him for doing it, and that's why I'm so glad. You know, I went to his hometown, fought him on that car, and got booed, and I flicked everybody else because guess what? That was accomplishment in my eyes, you feel me, that I never thought was going to happen. Like, I never thought I was going to be able to travel to Abu Dhabi and fly over there. You feel me? I never thought I was going to get the rematch with him again. You feel me? So, like, that really meant something to me in that moment. And if the homies, like I said, if the homie was there, they'd be like, man, go do that shit, cuz. Because you know you got something you got to prove to yourself and everything else. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would never, ever call out anybody that's in this game because that's not me. I'm a humble fighter, but I like to talk with my hands and everything else. How hard did he hit? Did he hit it? Does he hit as hard as everybody says he does or not? Nah? Um, I'm going to be real with you, bro. Like, I ain't even trying to be funny. He did not hit hard. I would say really? he missed, like, tough. Like, he's a tough guy. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, coming in at 215, like, he was a solid dude. Like, that's why I told people, like, I played it safe because I started noticing he was waiting for me to throw the counter off me every time. But that's when I started throwing a lot of leg kicks to take the power off those hooks because he's a straight bull rushing bulldog coming forward. But, like, when he threw a couple punches, he gave me a black eye too, which I appreciate that too because I was like, yay, cool. Um, like, he hit me, bro, and I'm going to be real with you. Like, yeah, he caught me a few times, you know, even the kicks caught me. But – I'm going to be real with you, bro. It has only been one person, bro, that I got into a fight that made me like, damn, bro, he hits hard. And he, I fought him when I was an amateur um, a long time ago, bro. Um, and his name is like Ezekiel Jackson, something like that. Like I told people, like I said, went in and got the dub and shit, but I don't know if he's fighting still anymore or whatever. Ezekiel but Jackson. That's the only person. I got respect to him in the fight. Then he acted like a bitch afterwards, which is crazy. I don't understand that. Oh, he got not okay, so but you know, but like that's the only person I can say, bro, that actually hit me hard as hell, that dude. But when I fought Abu, he didn't really hit me and I like that I thought he was gonna hit. Because that's what everybody was telling me, like, dude, dude was throwing bombs, dude was trying to fucking take your head off. And when he was hitting me, I'm like, Are you sure? Because like these feel like like average punches, you get what I'm saying? And I ain't I ain't trying to be funny, but like, yeah, it really did. I mean, it showed. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate you coming on, man. There we go. Number 11. We did it, boys. Follow Mike. Follow Ice Bags. Follow me on, uh, well, you don't really have to. Follow Mike and Ice Bags. Follow Overdogs on all social media platforms. Hit like on that. Subscribe on YouTube. 